Alçuman kulaksız. Ruhi ve spiritual world and we are commemorating him and uh, on this special day I'm embracing you all with love I think we all understand that being human is not simply to be born in the shape of a human in order to be a human being which means to wear the Mohammedan beautiful conduct it's not enough to just be born of the human race or even to be born a Muslim. According to Kenan Rifai, a dip is what separates animal from man. So with a situation like this, to understand and to take as an example those who have been able to be humans is a must. Mishkri Sargut is a beautiful human raised by Kenan Rifai, a rose-loving, rose-smelling lover of truth. Born in the in Edirne Kapu as the third daughter of a Rifai father and the Kadiri mother in 1925. Her mother Shadi Hanım had become Kenar Rifai's uh, disciple shortly before her birth and announced this in her characteristic urgency and truthfulness to everyone calling them to join her path and telling those who wouldn't come that she wouldn't be able to see them anymore. Upon her teacher, a sheikh of four tariqs, giving her permission to choose, she said that she wanted to be Qadiri, but later learning that most of the Ikhwan, the circle around her were Rifai, she said to him, I was impolite, make me be whatever you deem appropriate and thus express her feelings in the presence of her teacher and Kenarifai smiling said what difference does it make Shadi? you're all Kenani so Shadi Hanım uh, with her husband James Bey walk on the same path was very saddened when her child third child was also a girl so her Murshid who is the spy of hearts told her to name her third daughter Meshkure, which means the one due to whom we are thankful. So Meshkure would learn what her name meant from her teacher years later. When Meshkure was only 40 days old, the family moved right across from their Murshid's house. So in this way, Meshkure passes through the door of the lodge with her swaddle. She benefited from that great door until Kenari Fai's passing in 1950. So this would be with chocolates filling her skirts at the beginning and then would continue with wisdoms poured into her heart. While on the one hand her education continued with the national education system, on the other she came to be filled with very deep tasawuf knowledge and the profound love of Allah and Murshid from a very early age. Kenari Fai by saying, Meshkure, in my hand a tambour, I am embroidering you. Ornaments this pre-eternally blessed servant of God's with the Muhammadin conduct and forms her into a human. Meshkure would actually stitch her teachers every word, every look, every point of view, every behavior into her memory and her heart. And in this way, she would spend her entire life, every moment with her teacher. From now on, in every step she would take, every word she would say, every manner she would show, they would be all directed by her teacher's teachings. Everything would pass through the sieve of Kenan Rifai. She would be very conscious of not doing anything that would go against his teachings and wishes. Now she was painted in the colors of her mushit. And by her hand, she embroidered a couplet, couplet for her teacher. Sometimes I exist and stand with your beauty. Sometimes I leave existence and become your beauty. This couplet is still hung on the wall of his room. Mishkure, 
in accordance with their mother's wishes, married the orphan son of Halide Hanım, Dr. Ömer Faruk Sargut. Her only wish from her husband was that he not hinder her spiritual education at the lodge. But Mr. Sargut, while full of love, but also equally jealous, was never an obstacle to his wife's activities on this spiritual path. He would also reach the happiness of being able to serve by becoming Kenan Rifai's doctor. In 1950, the pain of separation comes. Tears become floods. Never having left the spiritual presence of the Sultan, Meshkuri had tasted the beauty of being with him in this world and the body could not adapt to, adapt to his absence. When she fell asleep after crying a lot one night, he appears in meaning in the dream. She asks, oh my teacher, why did you leave us? And he answers, my shirt was worn out, Mishkure. From that moment on, until her last breath, she would wake up remembering him, spend the day with the knowledge that she was always in his presence and thus would be stylish, elegant, clean. She would go to sleep remembering him. She would meet every painful and sweet event with the armor of her murshid, and she would advise everyone in this way. While her older sister Suheila was undergoing a cancer operation, she had stayed with her at the hospital, and upon Suheila Hanım not liking the soup, warned her, saying, my murshid did not like complaints like this, he would say this in these types of situations. And her uh, sister asked, my murshid, even in soup? Yes, for Meshkuri, even the salt in the soup was her murshid. Every book she read, every movie she watched, every country she traveled to, she would share all the beauties she found and the happiness she felt in all that she did with her murshid. Her mind would always be with her murshid in pain and in happiness. She spent her whole life knowing to be thankful for the reason and was continually thankful to Allah. After her Murshid's passing, Meshkure, in her own words, took refuge in teacher Nazla Hanım, someone about whom her teacher Kenan Rifai had said, those who want to see dead before dying should look to Nazla. So she continued her education with Nazla Hanım. Throughout this, she adopted a young girl as her spiritual child and then later birthed two daughters, Safiye, Cemarnur, and Asuman, respectively. Now, Dr. Uh, Dr. Farouk Sargut was imprisoned during the coup in 1960. So taking refuge in her father's house with her daughters, Meshkure became a monument of faith and trust in Allah amongst all of the material impossibilities and uncertainties about her husband's safety and thus did justice to the spiritual training she had received. She passed through these hard days with full submission to Allah. With Nazla Annes passing away that same year, she began the years she would spend knee to knee, heart to heart with Samiha Ayverdi. From now on, she would begin discourses to the Ikhwan in meetings and spread her wishes teaching by reading and explaining under the guidance of her Samiha Abla. Alongside this, she was busy with the associations and foundations that had been established with the leadership of Samiha Anne in order to serve the people and the country. Donations were collected by going door to door to uh, shops for the first establishment of Turkish Women's Cultural Association. Much effort was spent in order to remember the subtleties of our culture. Later, she would support heart and soul the activities for service to Islam, which included the establishment of endowed chairs, both in the countries, in the country and abroad by the association. She would be very excited and despite her old age, would travel to the US in order to personally be at the presence at the opening ceremony of the establishment of the chair there and thus demonstrate her sensitivity on this topic. The Kubelta Foundation would become a hearth of wisdom for many youths, both from Istanbul and from places to be made aware of topics relating to spirituality. 
and the homeland. These are days committed to service within a discipline whereby every word from Samia Ayverdi was accepted as coming from her mushit. After Samia Ayverdi's passing away, she was aware of the responsibility that had been placed on her shoulders and was at the head of her works with the same discipline and diligence. Lastly, she would roll up her sleeves in order to establish the Jenan Foundation with her belief that it, in this way Kenan Rifai's statement that Tasawwuf would one day be taught in academies would be established, would be accomplished, and she would start work with Kainat Bukaksoy. And by spending the greatest possible effort in the purchase and restoration of the lodge and for the acquiring of the necessary assets for the foundation, she became the cornerstone of the project. Now she was the Meshkura Anne of many people. Motherhood befits her well, for she is the connoisseur of material, spiritual giving. She gives to whoever asks. She gives again to the one who asks again. To those who need but cannot say, she would give with buckets, money, cash, clothes, jewelry, headscarves, whatever she has, whatever she finds, she would distribute. She would act with the same beneficence when it came to prayers. She would pray for the whole world, for our country, name by name, for everyone who asked during the norm morning prayer. When the list became longer, in a period that would sometimes take minutes, sometimes hours, she would continue sure of Allah's given without feeling laziness, boredom, or tiredness. She would show the same generosity in giving and sharing what she had learned from her nurshid. Including the year she passed away, she would enlighten hearts, call to peace, and invite to being a human through the discourses she had done for more than 50 years. When the day of the discourse had come, neither sickness nor any other excuse could stop her. Today she continues her services through her four books which have been compiled under the name From Illuminated Heart to Illuminated Heart. Motherhood befits her well because she spreads love, mercy, peace to her environment. Every morning she would care for and say hello and talk with all the living things in her house from the parakeets to the plants, non-living things would also receive their share of compassion. She would always put her things where they belonged, always sit in the same chair, would apply the understand of fidelity she had seen from her master to the material. She was always in the presence and always at peace. She was one of the few humans whose behavior was the same when confronted by both pain and happiness. She had put on the feature of being content with Allah like a dress and never stayed straight or made a mistake in the face of any trials. Upon a warning from her teacher, she never cried for anything other than the love of Allah. She received news of both births and deaths by saying, oh, good, mashallah. She was balancing and unifying. She would not care if there was talk against her. She would not blacklist the speaker. She would forgive. She would not hold grudges. She would not get angry easily. She would embrace everyone and everything with the same love and compassion. Motherhood befits her well because she keeps her word. Never has it been seen that she did not keep a promise or not arrive somewhere at the appointed time. She would not lie. She would not do anything that went against her conscience. Motherhood befits her well because the mercy she felt towards all created was all the highest order. She would not even be happy with someone looking harshly at a created. Being the solution to someone's problem was her greatest happiness. She would invigorate those whom she touched. Everyone benefited her. Everyone wanted to be near her, to benefit from the love and peace she spread around her. Meshkuri of Sargut was one of those who could carry both this world and the hereafter together because this is what she had learned from her teacher. The fastidiousness she showed in her prayers had almost become famous. When she was to go on a trip, she would first ask and learn that places prayer times and the direction to Mecca would be determined. And while her search for the Kublai when she was staying at a hotel that would spin around itself in Antalya is among the sweet memories, the hotel authorities were also alerted to provide compasses in the rooms until her doctor forbid her, she showed the same meticulousness 
in her fasting and lived every Ramadan in great joy. On the other hand, it was possible to see her sometimes in the movie theater, sometimes at a play, and sometimes at the opera. She loved to read, listen to music, and to travel. While doing all this, she would place Allah at the very center and experience the pleasure of viewing his works. She would always draw lessons from everything that happened to her. I witnessed her become emotional while watching a show about a killer whale and saying, even if this whale learns manners, how is it that we still continue to follow our ego despite all the efforts spent on us? Mishkure Sargut united with her Nushit in the month of February in 2013. The longing she had felt ended and hours started. The poor she had looked after in the neighborhood the neighbors, shopkeepers, the personnel, doctors, nurses of the hospital, with whom she had spent the last month, whomever she had seen, whoever she had smiled to, all were affected by her. Everyone felt a deafness in her, for she had completely submitted herself to the will of her mushid had painted herself in his colors. She was rich all who had the beautiful conduct of her mushit, a rose-loving, rose-smelling lover of the truth. What dies is the animal, lovers never die.